$303,324. That's how much we made in gross assignment fees in our real estate wholesaling business with our partners. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the deals so you know exactly the type of deals you can find if you are going to be doing online marketing, specifically Facebook ads and TikTok ads in order to find motivated sellers. Because if you're a real estate wholesaler and you're struggling to do deals, the biggest thing that you can do right now for you is to solve the issue of lead generation. And some of you are trying to solve it by doing cold calling and doing some of these other antiquated and really old school techniques. But I'm here to tell you that it's so much easier for you to generate motivated seller leads online because they're going to be warm incoming leads. These are people that don't consider you an annoying pest. They consider you a welcome guest. These are people that have raised their hands and said, yes, I'm interested in selling my property at a discount and I would like to speak with you. So when you finally get them on the phone, it's a much easier conversation. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the variety of deals that we do, just a sampling of them because I'm not, I can't go through every single one. But just to give you an idea of what the potential for this is. And on my channel here, you can find other videos that will, that will show you the, the actual strategies themselves. And I'll link to those one of those videos at the end of this video. So you can watch that as well. But let me walk you through the deals here specifically. Now, uh, here is uh, a couple of things about the transactions I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you just a sampling of the transactions. I'm not going to show you every single one, but just a sampling so you have an idea of what uh, these, uh, uh, these are like. Most came from Facebook ads, maybe a handful of them from TikTok. So Facebook ads for motivated sellers is a very viable strategy right now. Total assignment fees is $303,324. And then our, we made half of that. So the way it works is we our clients come in and we set up all their ads, we run them. And then as the leads come in, they will go ahead and speak with the property owners we will go ahead and help them in analyzing the deals and determining what the properties are worth because we're doing this nationwide, so they need that help. And then once the property is put on the contract, the deal is given back to us, and then we will find the buyer. We will coordinate everything and get the deal to the closing table. So that's why there's that gross number, and then there is the half number. And you know, this is during a time when the rates were fairly high, in, you know, because the rates just recently started to come down. And so I want to also make a note. I want you to make a make make a note, uh, make, uh, make a mental note of this. Ah. The fact is that I believe now once the election is over and now people have, you know, entrepreneurs have a, a bit of a positive upbeat mentality about what the future is going to hold. This is not supposed to be a political conversation, but in general, there is an upbeat in the economy. Then. I believe that the next few years are going to be amazing for real estate wholesaling. So I definitely want you to take advantage of the opportunity that's out there because you can make more money now. You can make more money in the next 12 to 18 months than you've made in the last 12 to 18 years. So let's walk through some of these deals here. Uh, this is a property in 18860 Sunbright Avenue, Lathrop Village, Michigan. Now, with a lot of these leads, when they come in, I, we don't, we didn't, there's no familiarity with us, right? So uh, all of our lead generation is across 15 to 20 states. Leads come in. Uh, we, we, you know, we get leads in areas that we've done deals before, but we get leads in areas that we've never done a deal before. And this was one of these here. Now, this particular property, you can see the Zillow here. The Zen estimate uh, was 329000 And uh, this is where the property was located. You can see that it was located in Detroit, in you know Detroit's a main metro, but it's located to toward the north uh, side here of Detroit in the suburbs. That's where the deal was located, and uh, the property here. Uh, let me pull up the map here so you can kind of see uh, what this looks like. Here, this is the map. This is the property from Google Street View. Very nice uh, looking area here. Very great neighborhood, and. Uh, this particular property, uh, property was in fairly okay shape. Uh, he was looking to sell ASAP. If you look at the comment at the bottom, I wanted to get, um, he didn't occupy the home. And uh, I, this is how they come in into our system once a partner uh, submits the information so that we can then sell it. And um, 
this, these were the comments in terms of the contract price that was on the contract for 221000 I'll go over the details here and what we thought we could sell it for, and then the estimated uh, retail value. This is the photos of the property here. Uh, as you can see here, um, fairly nice, well manicured uh, house here. I had a deck here, as you can see here. Uh, well, I guess you can call that half a deck. And then uh, that, it looks like there was some damage here to the roof, as you can see from there. And uh, it's an okay house, your typical investor type property. Now, uh, this here, the contract on that property was for $221,000. And um, the so 221. And then we were able to assign the deal for 250. Does that numbers make out? Because I mean, we may have gotten a price reduction here. Uh, yeah, it was that much. It was uh, 29,000. Uh, so we assigned it for 250. And then uh, that was uh, the assignment fee here, $29,000. Now, our net wire was less than that. The buyer that we were dealing with, was a bit of a pain in the ass, honestly, and um, made things a little bit more difficult than they should have. So when all said and done, uh, he did not want to pay the seller's closing costs, even though the agreement with, that we have with the seller said that we that, he, that the buyer was paying the seller's closing costs. He didn't want to do that, so we ended up eating uh, five grand worth of closing costs, a little bit under five grand. And so uh, the net wire was twelve to us and twelve to our partner. Here's another deal in Olive Street, Goshen, or Goshen, Indiana. Not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, this came from Facebook ads. Um, the description said that the house can be a teardown and build another house. No updates whatsoever. There was The person was still living in it. It was a manufactured home sitting on three lots. They owned all of them. They've owned the property since 1972. And the deed was under her name and the husband who passed away. And um, when Gene on our team was the one that initially spoke with the lead after it was submitted to us. So the way it works is that uh, once a partner puts that property in the contract, then it gets submitted into our CRM. And then at that point gets rotated between a couple of people. Gene was the one that got this one. And then Gene reached out to introduce himself to this seller and, uh, our CRM is called Follow-Up Boss, and the Follow-Up Boss is designed for real estate agents, but we've modified it to work fit for us. Any CRM will do for you. And then what it does is though you make calls through the system, and then once you're done with the call, it will the system will summarize the call. So it'll produce a transcript and summarize uh, the call. So Gene introduced himself as a transaction coordinator. That's what we introduce. That's how we introduce ourselves to the seller. Uh, the um, the agent will be connected. An agent is Gene. So Gene will be connecting. This is what he told the seller. Connecting the seller with the title company. Uh, lead needs to provide pictures of the property. And then a contractor or partner will need to walk around the property to verify its, its condition. So this would be the case for you, regardless if we were involved in your deal or not. But you want to let the seller know that, hey, the reason we're able to buy so many properties all throughout the country is because of the fact that we work with investors and investor partners in every single area that we that we buy properties in. So once we have the property in the contract within about three or four days, I'm going to call you so that we can go ahead and schedule a time for our boots on the ground, our investor partner to take a look at the property to confirm the condition. We know that it doesn't, you know, we know that it's not going to be perfect condition, so we're not expecting that. And so uh, we just want to make sure that it it is the condition that you uh, that you say it is. Um, and then um, he told her that we're going to schedule uh, that. Um, she He sent her a text message so that she had his contact information. Um, and then he asked her to review the photo instructions in the purchase agreement. Uh, the way we sent our purchase agreement, our purchase agreement, this is, uh, this is the letter here. You can see it here. You can pause the video. And then this is the other part of the contract. Uh, this is the next page the actual contract itself and then the instructions for the photo and frequently asked questions you know this way like if, if you sent the contract to the seller 
and we sent this. We're going to look a little bit more legitimate than you are. So anything you can do to uh, stand out with the seller. Uh, Gene made some notes on the deal. Mobile home for two, 1,300 square feet, two lots. And, uh, and so there's empty lots there. That's what made the property valuable. And uh, this is the, uh, the Zillow on the property. Uh, Zillow estimate said that it was worth 109. I wonder if that has changed. Still 109 uh, here. But you know what happened is Zillow was only valuing that the property with the lot. So there were other two lots available uh, that came with that purchase. And this is a mobile home. And uh, do we have photos of this? Did I show you photos already? Um, let's see. I may have photos. So uh, let's talk about where it was located. It was located in a town called Goshen. I know I'm maybe mispronouncing that. So if we, if we scroll out here, uh, you can see Fort Wayne. Uh, this is in Indiana, right? So it's a small town. But now if I look at here, this is the same town. One of the things to note, and this is kind of where you have to be mindful of when you're doing uh, nationwide wholesaling, is that it's deceiving when you look at this and you say, oh, it's a, such a small town. But it really isn't because you can see this activity. If I toggle here between this and this, you can see that, you know, there's, um, there's, a, there's 92 properties that are currently available in the market. But if I click on pending, the number here is 125. So it's 125 total properties of which 92 are available, which means that there is a gap and that gap are the number of pending sales. So that is positive. The fact that, wow, there's a lot of pending inventory in this market. Now for this particular property, uh, let me see if I have the contract price here and not yet. Yeah. The contract price was 19,200. And, uh, if I look at this area, and I deselect everything. I'm only going to select houses. Uh, actually, if I select manufactured homes, there really isn't any manufactured homes here. Um, there's this one. There's this one. And if we look at just conventional houses and we say, hey, what is available below 50,000? There's nothing. So if we're picking this up for 19,200, even if I didn't know anything about the area, the fact that there's absolutely nothing for sale, hardly anything for sale. Uh, now, under 100,000, uh, there's a few things here. Uh, so there's a little 1-1 one, one property here. And then there's another one here. Uh, there's a 1-1. One, one. I believe this is a house, not a manufactured home. And so it's a no-brainer to take advantage of this opportunity because it's, it's, it's $19,200. Um, So let's go through now. This is the this is the town. The population size is thirty four thousand three fifty five. Photos. Uh, so this is what what Gene sent the seller. Maybe the seller didn't understand what he need what was needed, so he sent this here, which is actually what's on our agreement here anyway. And then um, the one thing you got to do is we ask the sellers to email the, the we email the photos because uh, if they send it by text and it degrades the quality. So these are the photos that were sent to us. Now, um, I think that there's some roof damage up on the top there. Yeah, they have a tarp. Uh, you can see that it wasn't in the best of shape here. This is what the condition looked like. Kitchens. Pretty beat up, pretty beat up. So we ended up getting a price reduction on this one. So we got it for 19,200 and we eventually got a price reduction to 13,000. So what happened is that we assigned it for 27. Originally we were at 19,2 and assigning it for 27. So we ended up reducing the price slightly on the, on the deal. And so at the end we ended up, um, this is a, a particular deal that we had with this uh, with this partner uh, that was different than the 50-50 split. Uh, we've since uh, satisfied that. So now we're at 50-50. So this was a $14,000 gross assignment fee on this particular deal. Here's another one in Napa Valley Drive. This one, we didn't make that much money, 
there was a lot of other problems. The, the property had problems. They had a, a German roach problem. I don't even know what that is. Uh, they haven't seen Puerto Rican uh, roaches. Uh, so uh, this one here, uh, there was a divorce situation. Pretty good. Uh, house was in pretty good condition. Uh, extra lot on the side of the house that they thought that it was worth a lot more but nobody's really building in that area anymore so the lot had, had didn't have that much value other than providing uh more more lawn space right for whoever purchased the property it was in relatively good condition uh the population in that particular suburb is seventeen thousand. it is near atlanta i'll show you where that's located and um it's, it was a desirable community you can see the house here it's actually a pretty good looking house here. We had tried to pitch them on a novation and some subject to, but they didn't really want to do it. They were getting a divorce. They wanted that mortgage done and over with and not in their name anymore. So we really had to try to find a, a, a deal that was a wholesale deal. This is where the suburb is on the left. And this is Atlanta. And uh, this was a Zillow uh, market value and Zillow showed 321. Uh, this was a photo of the property here. I couldn't find in our folder the photos of the interior, but it was in pretty good shape. Our partner originally put this property in the contract for two fifty, and uh, got submitted to us. And so we went back right there on the spot and said, "Hey, you got to get a better price. Got to get a better price," which she did. So it was reduced to two twenty. However, uh, once reduced, the even though it was reduced, we could we could not do that well with it. We ended up assigning it for two twenty five, and so we made five thousand. Our half was twenty five hundred. The other half uh, was twenty five hundred as well. And um, the thing to note is we are always trying to do deals that are at least you know twenty twenty five grand, and you start with that. But then sometimes things come up. You know the property's in worse condition than you thought, and so at the end of the day you know, you're faced with a decision. Do you do the deal even though it's 5K? The answer is yes, because you're going to help the seller, the buyer gets a deal, and you you just go ahead and, and get it done. It's not the ideal thing to do a deal and only make 5K, but if you said, oh, I don't want to do the deal, the hell with everybody, you know, I'm just going to, you know, go to the next one. I don't want to do that much work for the, a little bit of money. Then I, I certainly wouldn't do that because it's putting the seller in a bad spot because they need to sell and you have a buyer. If you really didn't want to handle the deal, you could just simply tell the buyer, Hey, why don't you just take over the deal contract with them directly and pay me a finder's fee. But in this scenario, it took a lot of massaging because the buyer needed some stuff that the seller wasn't able to accommodate. And so we had to do some negotiations there. And so I don't think that the deal would have closed on its own without us. And so to that extent, we provided a service to them. Now I have other deals, but I just wanted to kind of go over these here with you to give you an idea and a flavor of the type of deals we got. So you can see that, you know, we get deals in small towns, we get deals in, in, in larger metros and we do our best. But at the end of the day, you know, the most important thing, these are inbound leads. So if you're interested in learning how we get these leads and the and, and how we how we create the ads and everything else and how they look like, go ahead and click on uh, one of the videos that will pop up here or there. And then that way you can see. And if you are interested in getting more information about our partner program, go ahead and click the link in the description. And then when you do that, I'll reach out. You'll submit your information. I'll reach out and let you know about it and see if it maybe might be a good opportunity for us to work together. Otherwise, make sure you watch those videos and subscribe to the channel.